what's up guys welcome to the podcast we have this is a one of the most fun times i've had an episode i'm so stoked for you guys to listen but first we got a new sponsor we got joy mode in the house and guys i want to talk to you about sex all right this ad is all about boning do you want to increase your performance do you want to get the top bone possible well joy mode does that and okay so joy mode is like a it's like pre-workout for your hog so basically they use like in other products like viagra cialis they use like kind of gnarly chemicals this is al natural to increase blood flow to your thing and uh 15 minutes or less is great um but not when you're referring to your performance in the bedroom so go to use go to usejoymode.com get 20% off with code go deep at checkout that's 20% off and free shipping with code go deep at use j o y m o d e.com we are also in florida this week we are going to be in orlando we are in orlando tonight we are in tampa tomorrow we are in dania beach friday striders with us super fun shows get your tickets at chatjt.com let's start the show I can't explain I got a feeling that I just I can't erase Just a feeling that I won't Won't leave behind Because it's something that is on It's on my mind I guess it goes like na 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 no, 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 no. What's going on, Stokers of Stoke Nation? This is Chad Kroger coming in with the Going Deep Chad JD podcast. I'm here with my compadre, Jean Thomas. What up? Read the books your father read. Chapwing. And we're here with the tongue dart tyrant, Strider Wilson. What up, boys? Fired up to be back in the studio, dude. Let's do this. Love dude, that. Good energy. Good sexual energy in here today. I don't know what it is, but there's something. I mean, you got this Miami vibe to you right now, and it's Thanks. it's doing a lot of the heavy sexual lifting right Dang. now. I put on cologne today, actually. You did? Oh. Yeah, Giorgio. Nice, Armani. Yeah. Very nice. Is it the one that comes in the bottle that looks like a man's physique, the blue one? Absolutely. It's a great one. Yeah. I have that one, too. Oh, you do? Yeah. Nice. I bust it out, um, usually on the weekend. Mm. When the wife comes home from work on a Friday, she sniffs that. Long, along with the pheromones, mm -hmm. you better believe some boning takes place after that. Can you walk us through like the whole, oh, yeah. the whole scene? I bump out. Usually, I'll I'll FaceTime one of my boys. Sometimes JT, he'll watch yeah. me bump out maybe a good wad, mm -hmm. so I'll get a nice pump. Mm -hmm. Happy to participate. Love that. Him having my back. JT's getting it. We get a sweat in. That always gets my endorphins going. You know, give him a virtual dap later. Then after that, I take a shower. I walk the dog. Make sure he's fed. Um, then I save his TREAT for later for when my wife and I can enjoy. Um, then after I'm showered and walked, so I have a little sweat going, that same sweat base for my pheromones, I put a little Armani right there, like under where the, where the, uh, jawline meets the neck right there, like mm. where a vampire would get you mm. right there. Um, and then I sit, I put on my best blazer and tie, no bottom. <laughs> Mm. completely butt naked but also dress shoes wow <laughs> i have sensitive feet i have fat plantar fasciitis so i wear my nice dress shoes with insoles oh beautiful and then i stand at the entryway mm. and one time a vedex guy did show up and he <laughs> did see he did see my ass, but he did Ooh. he respected it because up top i was business what yeah. were you getting delivered that was actually um some protein shakes nice. yeah i switched over from uh dude honestly dude big confession I'm off muscle milk now. Now I do these plant-based ones. Smart. I'm mm -hmm. full LA now. And I bet the FedEx guy was like, package, recognize package. Yeah, he did. For sure. He did. He saw me. He goes, yeah, exactly, dude. What does your wife wear to correspond with your outfit? So this is a great question. She comes home in her regular work clothes, you know, classy work clothes. She sees me naked. She goes, hold on one second. Because she can see my little dink starting to rise. She goes, <laughs> hold on one second. She goes into the room, immediately changes in to a... Snowboard gear. I actually like when she wears mm. kind of a broy. It is hot on gear. chicks, dude. Yeah. I know. Isn't that yeah. nice? Yeah. She puts on a full gator. It's is LA. It's usually ninety five. Snowboard boots as well. She'll put the boots on, which is thank God she doesn't ski because otherwise the downstairs neighbors will be pissed. Yeah. Yeah. And but no pants. Of course, well. no pants. So like four layers up top, helmet, mm -hmm. goggles, gator mm -hmm. boots, mm -hmm. and you don't wear a condom. No, no, we're married. Nice. Yeah. Where do you bust? 
Um, typically I don't. Um, I'm just over busting now. It's just sort of this new optimization thing I'm trying. I'm mm. on the same thing. I, that's why I call myself one of the start boys. Mm. Whoa. Actually, mm. I was just talking about that this morning with our buddy Pat. We're start boys. Mm. I love that. What is that? We decide our own finish line. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. The start boys. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. That's beautiful. You In the start, past, you start me up, I'll never stop. It's like mm. a fight. You ain't going to start it, but you're going to finish it on your terms. You, except I don't. No, I like that. I've noticed uh, you guys have an extra glow about you. Mm. And now I know it's the chi from the extra cum. And my and, Isle of Paradise fake tanning drops. Exactly. Dude. It Very looks nice. fantastic. And you know what, dude? Non-comogenic. And you know what, dude? I, um, our health guru, Troy, it says, if you know FAP, if you hold in your load for long enough, the load will travel up your spine and activate your pineal gland and you'll have a fat DMT trip. Whoa. Now, I do have to let you know, I do drill myself and absolutely blow loads. <laughs> yeah, I still <laughs> masturbate a lot. And yeah. actually, I got Troy's instructions backwards. Uh huh. <laughs> and for a while, I wasn't pissing, but I was drinking my cum. Oh, mm. yep. Yeah. Honestly, that's when you really got um, back to me with some notes really quickly. You, I was you, pretty happy. Yeah. Yeah. My emails were pointed. So it worked. I think anytime you're just dedicated to getting better, it's going to help. Right. Interesting. You know what I've been doing lately? It's that, um, it's that it's sort of not new but you want to activate those like um mammalian adrenal gland instincts mm -hmm. so you need to feel like you're gonna die mm -hmm. so what i do is i sleep on the ledge of my balcony mm. at night and if i roll over i'll fall three stories off mm -hmm. but if i wake up the next day i find myself really productive wow. sending a lot of nice emails yeah that's, that's really clarifying day. yeah it's really smart mm -hmm. i'll uh i'll do the same thing i, I fist fight my dad wow good yeah yeah classic and then i just go you know hang out with my kids and work right it's nice you know what i did the other day that felt great uh my dad was about to make a point on the phone and mm -hmm. i said hold on hold on gotta run real quick mm -hmm. had nowhere to go just hung up on him you know what i've nice been power move. big beef move i've been taking a bath lately and having my girlfriend dangle the blow dryer over it really Smart. i mean that really uh it tightens the pores and it puts the pressure on mm -hmm. her in a way where you're mm -hmm. like, don't fail me. Yeah. It, and it, I think that's important for trust. We, we've we bonded extra hard. And that's, yeah. yeah. I, I've, I've continued coming, mm -hmm. but now I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll preserve it uh, for my own self. I've been doing, I know where all the sex offenders live in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll go over to their house and I'll pick them up and bring them over. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just sit at the table with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, smart. Wow. And wait for them to make a move. Wow. Really smart. What I do is... Um, I'll go buy drugs downtown mm -hmm. um, and then tell the drug dealer where I live. Mm -hmm. Say, hey, come pick up the money later. Leave a door unlocked mm -hmm. and just sort of see what happens. Is he mm -hmm. going to come by? Is he not going to come by? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I find that the next day I'm really getting two to three more reps in my workout. You know, there's a rattlesnake uh, in, behind my house. Mm -hmm. it has a little, and I'll wrangle the raggles, rattlesnake. You know, you can do it with just like a little... Uh, I use a, a hanger. Mm. I put it in the bathroom and I put it in there and I meditate. Smart. And if you can meditate to the rattle of a rattlesnake, that's known to activate your phyglocalogen, um, which helps you access flow state. You normally need the sun for that. Mm -hmm. You know what else I'll do? I'll, um, I'll call random numbers. Like I'm leaving a message for Elon Musk. Oh, wow. That's good. I'll go to a local middle school pickup area. Mm -hmm. And just be like, hey, kids, hop in, um, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I've really found um, I've been able to get a few babysitting gigs out of that, which mm -hmm. is nice because parents will pay me for that. You got to work back. for free. You got to be preemptive. You got to show people you want the job. Yeah. I'll call an L.A. Times journalist sometimes and call him or her the R word. Um, oh, just to, a you know, the threat of cancellation helps me focus on my career. Smart. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, no notes. We're all, I guess, in, to some eyes, crushing it. Things are good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cruise, cruise. Yeah. <laughs> we had a pretty uh, good game of uh, Call of Duty the other night. Dude, Ooh. it's fun. The new update. It's okay, well, good. before the update, though, we played the best we've ever played. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was amazing, dude. We put up 37 kills, bro. Eight, eight, right? Oh, eight, seven, nine. You're right. You're right no, you had nine. I Yeah, 37 kills. Mm -hmm. And then my bro, and then um, 
Was it Greg? Greg had, each had, had, had 10. I love that we all had a lot of bags. That was nice. Bro, almost. You guys are doing bags? Body bags. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's back to Fortune's Keep. What's, what's body bags for you? Just general question. I think if I drop more than six, I feel pretty good about my game. If I drop more than eight, I'm like, all right, I was I was slamming some people. That's pretty That's good. That's really good. Yeah. yeah. We go based off like damage most of the time mm. because one guy will have like eight and he'll only have like 1,500 and you're like, bro, clearly you were stealing kills. Exactly. Right. Exactly. But um, so we go highest frag based on damage. Oh, cool. And what's a good damage for you? Like 2,500 is... Deep, like legit and then other other than that uh no like like 5k is like legit like you're doing great 5K that's a ton. a ton of damage yeah it's, it's pretty good that means you're getting like 12 kills no nah, no nah, like 8 to 10 potentially we're poachers yeah <laughs> I, uh, but we're but we're aggressive poachers i would average like two three well you're, but you're not repping you're you got to be in the gym yeah you got it you're a murderer dude you got that rage in you yeah that's in there it's in there. You know what? You know what actually pisses me off more than anything, I've I've learned in my relationship, just in life. This is not just contained in my relationship, but just life. When people tell me to heat up my food, you know, oh. people are like heat that up. You should heat that up. I'm like, I know how I like my food. Don't tell me how to eat my food. You know, they're like, no, you should heat it up. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I shouldn't. I like it cold. Yeah. I don't like when people try to dictate or tell me the temperature of my food and how I should like it. Thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? No, thank you for telling me. You're yeah. right. You know what though? I'm very guilty of this. I do this <laughs> to my good. wife all the time. I go, do you want some sauce for that? Do you, you should do that. And I'm like, so we, she's called me out enough to now where we joke around. I go, you're eating wrong. I just, yeah. and then we laugh about it. And then yeah. it's, but it was a process to get there. It's a process. Anytime so. someone tells me to change how I'm doing something, mm -hmm. my brain instantly goes through our entire history. And I'm like, have I ever asked this person to change what they're doing? Mm -hmm. And either I have and they didn't or I haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My, my girlfriend was like, would you get mad at your mom if she asked you? I'm like, anyone. I'm any, anyone. No, my mom will. <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll just fucking get, I'll fuck her up. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God. Dude, they still think, I mean, look, we love our moms, but they still tell me how to do everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Dude, my mom, dude. we're sponsored by like a s soft drink or something. And I love it. And I was really excited because like sometimes you get sponsored by stuff you don't like as much, right? So I was like, mom, check this out. They're sponsoring us. It's so good. And then my mom goes, oh, no, it has the bad sugar in it. It's really bad for people's stomachs. And yeah. then I let her go, oh, I guess I'll just go fuck myself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yuck and yums. It's so yeah. yuck and yums is I, I think as you grow older, it's the the temptation to yuck yums. You learn about that temptation because it's it's yuck and yums and and also trying to make f people feel sorry for you. Mm. You feel like that's gonna give you a boost. Like when you like point out the truth to someone, you're mm. like, actually, that's not how it went down. Or actually, you know, that's really bad sugar for you. You know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That you think that. It's going to make you feel good, but it does nothing for all parties involved. Yeah. It's, it's more negative overall. For and sure. Also, when, you, when you're like, well, here's the traumatic thing that happened to me. And people are like, okay. It's an addiction to talk about it. Yes. I, I feel it in myself. And then you, you're get, you get a little hit when you say it, but then afterwards you crash. You're like, why did yeah. I fucking do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was in a teen, I was like, I just felt compelled to drop this bomb on people be like my parents are divorced like they would respect me or like me more because i just mm. and it, it it's just they're like okay you know what i mean yeah they treat you like you were harry potter or something like that yeah Man. exactly that's that's such a good analogy like, they're like nah, oh you're the boy who lived i'm like yeah, yeah it's fine. i also like having no follow-up on it <laughs> yeah. it's just a nice move <laughs> yeah i did go to an east coast boarding school people don't people don't take that shit well and just being like my parents are divorced and then they they look at you for more and you're like <laughs> yeah yeah I do. <laughs> like, cool dude so are you gonna play soccer or <laughs> so when study know, all man. that is true sometimes yeah you say stuff and i'm just like i don't know what i was gonna say next but i'm happy I, I was talking to people do you guys ever catch yourself you're just talking and then after a while you're like oh i'm still talking you, you, you're, you're more clipped than i am hmm? in conversation like you don't meander in conversation as much as i do no but I, 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 I i'd say i'm more in the opposite thing i clam up more where i just don't talk um, i've been making a point 
and then disagreed with the point I was making like halfway through. I'm like, actually, I totally disagree with what I'm saying right now, but I have to, <laughs> but I have to just finish this sentence so we can move on with life. Will you say it out loud or just in your no, mind? No, like I'll figure it out. Like I'll, yeah. I'll be talking to like a coworker or something about it. And like being like, this is this, this, and then my, and then I'll realize I'm like, actually, that's kind of stupid. No, I shouldn't say that. What are you yeah. guys discussing right now? I can't, I can't, I've just happened to me like a few instances. Is it serious stuff or? No, more like menial. No, no stuff. Just kind of like, he's like, look, dude, you should respect, you know, your wife and your elders. And I'll be saying that. And then I'll disagree with it right when I hear it. I'm like, no, they're stupid <laughs> folks. You know what I mean? Like, do you, have you, uh, discerned anything about the, the next generation? Dude, it's funny. I was thinking about this. Uh, I like that they keep me intact and and sort of plugged into what what's going on. We were just talking about that. Yeah, and it's like, uh, it's nice, I, dude. It's all the same type of shit. Like they're all doing the same. Feel like the same stuff that that we would do. And it's young guys mainly that who I'm talking to, and uh, you know they like vaping. They party like they, and these guys have jobs, which is nice. So you know they work hard, and. Uh, but it all seems like the same regular shit. Like I saw, I thought about it because I saw this article. I didn't even see an article. I saw like an Instagram post about an article that I didn't read. And uh, it was like, study shows that Gen Z actually want meaningful, long lasting relationships. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, we're supposed to like, as the older generation, like figure out what they're into. Mm -hmm. Like they're not all poly was basically like the tone of it or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, maybe we're not supposed to understand. Like maybe our parents' generation didn't understand like the era of free love or whatever and like maybe it's just they'll figure it out i feel like there's always the same level of polyamory it's just are we at a cultural moment where you're allowed to disclose it yeah comfortably like as people are always been cheating the numbers on that are consistent yeah so now yeah. it's just like is it agreed upon hmm. or is it still do you think there was a moment in time where we had it right no no it's always bad it's just how you look at it. There's something I was going to say. I, I totally forget, though. But uh, I don't know. That your parents are divorced? Oh, dude. Yeah, Whoa, so man. I'm sorry to hear dude, that. Fuck. Well, here's the thing, guys. That's My parents funny. are divorced. You know what? Let's practice Whoa. it. Like, like you know, do it. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Um, My parents are divorced. Oh, my God. Chad, I totally misperceived you. I thought you were a happy-go-lucky guy, but now I see... Still waters run deep and that it had a profound effect on you. I've had trauma. You have. And I'm sorry people haven't taken that seriously. Is there anything I can do, whether it be lend you an ear or suck you off, that would make yeah. you feel right in this situation? I think just letting everyone you know know that I'm deep. And I've been through some stuff, even if it looks like I've had a charm life. But just let people know, hey... Um, he may have, it may look like he's had a charm life, but his parents are divorced. So next time you see him, you should probably suck him off. Smash cut. And, uh, sir, one more thing. No, no. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were cutting to right after I blew you. <laughs> That's funny too. Uh, yes, yes, yes. And sir, one more thing. Yes. Uh, before I let you go, Chad's parents are divorced. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, look, I was going to walk out of this Honda dealership today without buying a car, but I'm going to have to buy not only the Honda CRV, but I want the sport package with the moonroof as well. I'm happy to hear that. Is, <laughs> is Chad okay? Will it, will the car have a speaker phone so I can call him and check in on him regularly? And then smash cut you with you and your wife. Hey babe. <sighs> That was amazing, despite the fact I didn't nut. Um, did you know that Chad's parents are divorced? Oh my God. Yeah. His parents are divorced? Yeah. Should you and I both suck him off in tandem? Exactly. Exactly. Smash cut back to you after you've had like 100 BJs. Oh. <laughs> oh. Thank you. That was like a conga line of just blowies. Thank you so much. And thank you guys for the head. Yeah. Um, hey, man, just checking in. Um, it's my first blow job. Mm -hmm. I gave it to you under the understanding that your parents would be doing better and you'd be doing better mm -hmm. after I blew you. Mm -hmm. How are they doing? 
How are you doing? Let me call them up. I. It still hurts. Really? Yeah. Hey, was I good at sucking your dick? I mean, dude, you were the first TMB I ever had. Hey, yo. I didn't even think I'd have that with, with JT, but this guy can suck. Dude. Mama, 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 mama. Yeah, dude. Dude, he mama, goes, sorry about dude, your parents' that, divorce. That oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I, I, actually, I didn't hear an apology from you. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Sorry. Sorry for what? Sorry I didn't suck your dick good enough, dude. Well, you know, that you know, and... Oh, I'm sorry. Your parents are divorced. Thanks. Well, apologize in a good way. Suck that fucking dick. You're right. Dude. You're right. Suck yeah. that dick, dude. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Conga line ahead is going to be the name of something. Yeah. <laughs> dude, dude, conga line ahead. Of, that's your first stand-up album. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the cover is just me like, ooh. <laughs> Wait, Jake, can we watch the you touch and bust to... video real quick just to get us amped? I ain't going to lie to you, Ocho. That's, if you got that ooh wee, I'm touching bust. <laughs> it's just a mind game. You got to mind DMB. yourself. If you in, listen, if you in the ooh wee, you got to think football, think sports, think some completely opposite of what nope. you're doing. It may help you nope. last longer. Hey, I'm telling you, if you got that ooh wee, I'm Mr. TMB. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> just, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's your fault. It's your fault. Be mad at yourself because you got that scun. You. <laughs> just be mad at yourself. Oh, you <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're going to end up yeah, in the group I, that's chat. Right. That's right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Ocho, what you want me to do? If you got that ooh wee, man, you know you ain't lasting no longer. You ain't lasting long with that ooh wee. I'm, 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 I'm telling you, that's that's why I told you what to do. It's a mind thing. You got to, you got to be able to play mind games. You got to eliminate. You got to eliminate where you at and take your mind somewhere else. I, 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 I'm telling you hey. what my mind is. <laughs> if the first thing, hey, the first thing, if you hear, God. Damn, but it's over. That's it. That's it for me. Okay, that's it. I'm sorry. Okay. Same time tomorrow. Um, He's hilarious. That's dude. is that their whole podcast? <laughs> it, it is a lot of that. <laughs> dude, that's amazing. That's great. Before uh, before we having a calls, uh, you showed me. I think you showed me Andy Elliott. Oh, dude, yes, Andy Elliott. I sent bro. in an Andy Elliott clip to Jake. Jake, do you want to? Do you have that? Oh, this guy's great, dude. This was Andy Elliott's latest clip. Andy Elliott's a, uh, he's a, I think a car salesman slash motivational coach. Yeah. And uh, he's taking the internet. Look at yourself. Dude, you gave up. You completely eat garbage. You don't take care of yourself. You're negative. You complain. Come on, man. You go and drink. Why? I can go dance. I don't need to drink. I need to stay elite. If you don't believe in you right now, I swear I will come through this camera. I will throw you through a freaking window. <laughs> Take your shirt off. Dude, yes. He's Dude. like if Alex Hormozzi got like lost in the desert for a season. <laughs> Dude, yeah. Dude, it's amazing. He's so jacked, which is great. And there's is some nice stuff. Like, you know, yeah. there's some stuff to glean from what he says. Like, it is good. Believe in yourself in that. But, dude. He'll make dudes at conferences literally take their shirts off. Yeah. And he's been, he's the dude who said like, basically like, if you don't have a six pack, you don't work for me. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, he'll, he'll call out guys. He'll be like. Tough for the endomorphs. He's like, if you don't have a six pack, you ain't working for me. Look at this guy. He'll call out some guy. He's like, look at this guy. He's average looking, you know, and this guy, I'll take this guy, shred him down to 6% body fat. Cause right now no one wants to hang out with you, dude. I'm not being negative. But you look like everyone else. Yeah, yeah. But when you look at me, you're interested. Why? Because I'm shredded. Dude, my favorite one is he goes, he goes, you don't think when I walk up at the car dealership to someone <laughs> and he sees that vein pulsating out of my bicep. That's all he, says. he says that. He goes, you don't think that they clock that. You don't think they're going to respect what I say more. And the thing is, he actually is right about that. Like, yeah. I do respect a jack dude. Like, if a yeah. jack dude walks up to me, I'm like, fuck yeah, tell me some more stuff instead of like, to buy like, a there car, are optics. To buy a car too. Yeah, you can feel uh, a jack guy walks in. You buy. Oh, dude, I'm getting the off-road package, dude. Absolutely. Like, there's no question. Like, there's truth to it, but also at the same time, it's like, not everyone's gonna get jacked. Like, like it's just, I don't, no. I don't know. It's hilarious, dude. And it's just like, just goes to show, like, on social media, how hard you need to lean into one direction to like mm -hmm. stand out. Where he's like, I bet you, he probably he probably doesn't believe half the shit that he's saying. Maybe he does. Yeah. I don't know. But like the content he's putting out, he's like, I got to push it more and more and more. Yeah. It's, it's made everyone verbalize every thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
where he might have in the past just been like a cool jack dude who was pretty good at selling cars but now it has to be like a industry yeah, yeah. And, he, and dude think about it. if you get like a buddy of yours at your car dealership to like turn around start working out together and stuff that's rad yeah like dude you got your bro in the gym like if you do that like on a on a micro scale like that's really sick mm -hmm. trying to take anything like that that's like intimate or somewhat benevolent and then make it macro and make money off of it it's like mm -hmm. it's gonna become icky yeah yeah and you have to like there's gonna be incongruencies that you can't put into the videos like there's parts of him that he can't allow people to see because it would undermine the sales pitch yeah mm -hmm. and then even more so there are vulnerable parts that will be controlled vulnerability that will reach out where it's like you know actually andy uh you know at one point like I don't know, like I was low on sales in December one time and it's because, you know, my iguana died or whatever it is mm -hmm. that he's going to say. And then it's like, oh man, well, Andy is deep. Like that happens to me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's going to like feedback test his vulnerabilities to see which ones are actually effective and which ones are too damaging. Correct. Mm -hmm. Cause if he was like, oh, I, you know, used to uh, be addicted to getting pounded in my ass by hookers. Mm -hmm. Yeah people would, might say, oh, that's too big of a pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if instead he reframes it as, oh, I had problems with infidelity, everyone's like, oh, he was probably, you know, he has too many hot girl options. So of course he made some mistakes, but at least now he's on the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. Correct. Let, yeah, exactly. Let his audience do the heavy lifting as opposed to what the details are. Smart. JT, you could start a marketing company like that. That'd be nice. I could. Smart, perceptive. Dude. Hell yeah. I love that. Should we hop in the first call? Yeah. What's this? What's a scunion? Hey, man. How are you? Good. How about you, dude? Doing well, dude. What's going on? Just chilling, brother. We got Strider in the building. What up, sir? Oh, no shit. What's going on, dude? Chilling, dude. Uh, I just pulled up to the gym. About to get a fucking sick lift in. Let's go. Hell yeah. What are you hitting? Uh, I think I'm doing back and buys today. Just a typical bro dude lift. It's the best nice. day. It's a great day, dude. It's a yeah. great day. Do you at least get on yeah. that leg press though to boost that T through your body? I mean, just yeah. do a little warm up on the leg press. Just every day should be doing that. I say I'm gonna, but I never end up doing it. That's right. It's all right. It's how all right. how often are you working out? Six days a week. I try to get there four to five days. I got a tough schedule, so um, but I but I try. Nice, nice. So what ails you, brother? Yeah. All right, so I got some big beef. I got some beef with my bros. Um, you know, this is not as bad of a problem as the dude's beef with his girlfriend from last week. Uh, I guess he had trouble eating box. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. um, I got beef with my bros. Uh, basically, we're all uh, we're all police officers down here in Metro Atlanta. It's like a run group of like four to five dudes mm -hmm. uh they live about 45 minutes away from me so it's always a hike getting down to see them but i try to get down here like every other week uh we usually hit downtown and smash some brews together um out of the friend group i'm closest with one dude but the other three to four dudes they got beef because i have a tendency of irish exiting are you guys familiar with that term oh yeah yeah, yeah. so they like to party super super hard and uh, I mean, by the end of the night, usually eleven or twelve, I have I have to make that trip back home, and I have a uh, I have the issue of not liking to sleep in any other bed but my own bed. Mm. So uh, they like to force me or try to force me to stay out, and it makes me need to Irish exit. I'm always having an Irish exit so that way I can get home and get my own bed. And have um, you? What happens if you tell them you're leaving? I mean, they physically detain me they they put their hands on me and make me stay mm. wow and these so, are cops uh, they know, got what, cuffs what's that they got cuffs on them um i mean it's i wouldn't put it past them to put me in cuffs uh but i mean it's uh, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure do they, do they call you names like like bailer or pussy those are some of the terms they've used for sure. Yeah. Damn. So when so, you when you Irish exit, what happens? Are you bombarded with texts or what's what's going on? My strategy as of late is I try to just you know sneak off to the bathroom. I'll let them know, hey, I gotta I gotta let it rip. Uh, so I'll sneak off to the bathroom. I'll act as if I'm going over there, or I'll, or I'll go over there. And then I'll just find a way out the back. Now there's this one guy that I'm closest with. He has a tendency to Irish exit, even though he, he lives over there with them. Um, but he always supports it. So it's kind of like a 
I pull him aside saying and say, hey, I'm, I'm about to get out of here. Mm-hmm. And he always gives me the approval. But once everyone else finds out, I mean, the group chat, I just get eaten alive. Mm. Yeah. I, I, got, a, I so, got an idea for you, dude. I got an idea. Yeah. Here's what you do. You still don't tell them you're going to say bye because it's annoying. You're gonna, they're going to fucking go, oh, dude, stay, blah, blah, blah. You, you go to the bar. You send your boys who are staying around, okay? You have the message delivered from that person. And then what you also have to do is to justify your goodbyes. You need to get some sort of pet. Get a pet like a fish or a lizard, something like that, that you need to get home and feed and check on. Now, a dog would be good, but that's a huge investment. I won't tell you to go get a dog. But get a relatively sustainable pet and be like, hey, I got to go check in on it. Or, hey, the power went, you know, something that you need to go and be back at a certain time by. And they'll respect that a little bit more. And also, if you send them around, then what are they complaining about? Smart, dude. I don't know. These guys are pretty stubborn. It's it's really, really tough. I usually, my pet, I hate to say it, but I always use my girlfriend as an, as an excuse. And they're not for it. No, even don't though, do I mean, that. She's, no. a, she's a part of the friend group, but I mean... They're, they're never for it. And yeah. it so there's no excuse good enough. Have you have you gone on the offensive? I tried, but it, I mean, these guys are so, I mean, listen, they're all class. They're all uh, type A per, type personalities. They're all super fucking stubborn. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's there, when I say there's nothing I can do, there, there's literally nothing I can do. And I just want to get home and get to my own bed. And I can't, th- my other thing is, is, they want to go hard in the paint all night and, you know, drink like there's no tomorrow, but I still have that 45, 45 minute trip home mm. and I just can't get hammered on a Tuesday night. Have you ever called in like, uh, say like, Hey, dispatch reached out. There's a murder. I got to go I, take care I've, of it. I've used that excuse, but I mean, they, I mean, they, they know it. We all know well. everyone, so it, it wouldn't take them that long to confirm whether something actually happened or not. Uh, right, because mm-hmm. they know how to investigate. Exactly. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> what if you just accepted that you are yeah. going to catch shit for the rest of your life? I've, I've, I've certainly given in a lot more than I originally did. Um, but I mean, it's, it's just a lot of pressure and it almost makes me not want to go out despite how much I love going out and just getting after it with the guys because I mean, I, I need that, especially with the, you know, the job I work and all that. Um, but it's like, it's always lingering in my head. It's like, well, you know what? Uh, come 12, come one o'clock, I'm going to get shit. Are any I'm of not these... going to hear the end of it for the next week. Are any of them married? None of us are married. That's the thing. You got to get them married. Mm. You got to you got to invite out uh like a girls CrossFit team cuz I want them to be able to match up well with your gung ho brothers. Oh. Bring those gals out, make sure everyone's, you know, match fit for one another, get them porking, get them invested and get them locked down. And then you don't oh even my. have to do the job. Mm. Some broad with some know, sweet kunani I, and a better heart can make them right. <laughs> how do I get in contact with a really hot entire girls CrossFit team? You join a CrossFit gym, my bro. Mm-hmm. You oh go to, God. they call them boxes. Mm-hmm. You go in there, dude. You go into there and you're, you're in good shape, dude. You know, you're elite. This might take a week or two to build a relationship. You say, hey, come out with me and my buddies. We're going out, guys. And it's not... Like you're single and anyway, all you guys come on out. Let's go. And I think to get them hooked as well, this is a strategy that the boys have been using lately. Tell them to stop coming. Yeah. Because then they'll be kind of hooked. So uh, smart. Yeah. If once once they once they you know bust, then they're kind of like, all right, let's go rage. But mm-hmm. if they're containing their load, they're gonna want to get married. Yep. That's freaking genius. <laughs> I mean, it's the call, dude. It's the call. And if you can't get CrossFit gyms, you know, this is Atlanta. You guys got a lot of strip clubs down there. You go, you pay, you know, you pay, (laughs) you get get some girls out there, you know, the almighty dollar. You go CrossFit, stripper club, Orange Theory. Oh, there's there's definitely plenty of those to go around, I'll tell you right now. Yeah. Can you tell us about, like, your most interesting uh, arrest you've had to make? Oh, this is tough. You, it, it, the shit I have to deal with on the daily. It's tough, uh, right? 
everyone who calls you is having the worst day of their life. Is that the maxim? Yeah, pretty much. You know what? I'll give you guys this story to end on. And it wasn't an arrest, but it's definitely funny as shit. Uh, we got called out to an apartment because a DoorDash driver was concerned that he heard uh, someone inside the apartment uh, screaming for help. Mm. So obviously, uh, you know, in those circumstances, uh, if we can try to make contact at the door, um, or if we can't make contact at the door, it would be exigent enough to actually kick in the door or go inside because someone's life could be at risk. So uh, we show up, the DoorDash driver shows us, you know, the apartment uh, that they're hearing the noises coming from, and we go off to it, we put our ear up to the door, and, I mean, we can literally hear someone screaming, help. It was like, help, 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 and it was just constant. So we're knocking on the door saying, police, are you there? You know, you need help. And uh, we were getting no responses, so we didn't know if it was maybe an, uh, an elderly lady that had fallen and couldn't get up or, you know, maybe a small child that didn't really know how to communicate. Uh, so we made the decision, just based off what we were hearing, that we, uh, we were going to kick the door in. So uh, we gave it a few good kicks. We couldn't get it in, so we finally used a battering ram to just bust open the door. And we went inside, and no one was there. We, couldn't, we didn't see anyone, but we kept hearing, help, help, help. So uh, we went into one of the bedroom closets, and what do you know? There was a, uh, there was a beagle dog uh, in a, like a crate, and for some reason, the noise that it was making sounded exactly like someone saying, help, help, help. Whoa. Wow. So uh, we had to explain to the homeowners why we, because uh, they had cameras in their apartment, and they came home pretty quickly, why we uh, decided to battering ram their door down for their beagle. Amazing, dude. <laughs> dude. And come to find look... out, yeah. Come to find out, this beagle was 15 years old, and it was blind and deaf. Oh, oh. yeah. So we, you know, that was an interesting uh, explanation to our chief of why we, you know, kick someone's door down for a dog. <laughs> dude, can you imagine? Have you like your your ring camera, and you just see the cops just come in the apartment? <laughs> yeah. Well, they they come up and they're like this guy, the homeowner, uh -huh. the, the apartment owner. He came up with like a gun in his hand. He's like, I just saw a bunch of people like in our apartment. And he shows us the, you know, the, the video footage. And it's just us going in with our friggin' guns drawn and our gun lights on. And we're like looking around and we can't find anything until we stumble across this blind and deaf beagle. Hilarious. <laughs> that beagle has yeah, no idea how close it came. Dude. Dude. Man. Literally. <laughs> yeah. I, be before you go, I, I had another idea. But, uh, leading up to when you get your all your boys married, uh, you can sure. make a deal with them. Be like, once a month, I will empty the tank with you guys, and I will like stay yeah. out. And then the rest of the time, you can be like, dude, I have that one night. And then you know, you can't give me shit for the other nights because I give you that one night a month. Maybe you could try that. Because no, that's a really I, fair. That's a fair compromise. I just you know, yeah. I just have this. Like I said, I have this super extreme issue where I can only sleep in my own bed, and I just you know, I hate. I'm too old. I'm, I mean, maybe not. I'm 25 years old, but I'm just, I feel like I'm too old to be sleeping on the couch at this point in my life. Like, I, I really prioritize comfort because 99% of the time, I'm just not comfortable. Mm. I think that's like a good indicator of when you've hit like a maturity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would say so. I don't know. They're just, those guys are on a different level, and I'm just, I'm here to try to make them happy, but sometimes it seems like it's, you know, it's, it's never going to happen. You know what, man? You sound like a good dude. I'm glad you're on the streets. I appreciate it, guys. I love that. Next time you got to plant a weapon on the beagle. <laughs> <laughs> a little knife, something like that, you know. You, you, put, you put the gun in the beagle's paw and pull the trigger twice yeah. into the wall. <laughs> yeah. You, you fired twice clips. as we entered the door. Yeah. Get forensics in there, match the paw prints. Yeah. Sir, this is a golden retriever. Yeah. Oh. Then you take but, all of his treats for your dog. Yeah. <laughs> it's like training day. Oh, that's solid, guys. Thanks, man. Thanks for calling in. Later, bro. All right, absolutely. I appreciate you guys. You guys are the best. So are you. Quick cue. Irish exit? Is that a regional thing? Yeah, that's interesting. Versus Irish goodbye. I've always heard Irish goodbye. Yeah. Me too. I don't know. I love the Irish goodbye. It's a great move. I think at a certain point, it just becomes so much more functional than saying goodbye to everyone. Yeah. And now that you have a text, you can just text the group so they don't worry about you. Like, hey, what happened to this guy? Like, is he literally black? Like, it can get hairy like if you're traveling in cabo or another country but it's like hey i went went home with the lady or hey cruising back tired like oh, yeah all good. i think two people perceive it as like not cowardice but like oh you don't have the guts to like tell us you're leaving yeah. and it's like i'm just saving myself a half hour of 
nonsense. And who it, even really remembers? No one remembers. Goodbye. No one. And like, yeah, like, what do they think the whole group is like when they leave? Like, oh man, Darren, he's not here. Yeah. It's like, no, dude. I mean, maybe these, these, like this rare group, but isn't it, could it, it could also be argued that it's more selfish if you go up and you're like, hey guys, bye. Yeah. Hey guys, um, just so you know, I'm not going to be here any longer. So try to keep having fun. Yeah. You know, some people like getting ghosted more than getting told I'm not into you. Mm. Whoa. Uh, yeah, the, the, the uncertainty might be a little bit more comforting. Yeah. And they almost think it's like if some people, I like being told or I did like, hey, I'm not into you. I liked hearing that because it was just final. Mm -hmm. But some people think like you're presupposing that they're very into you. And so it's almost rude to break up with them because it wasn't that serious to them. Right. It's probably a certain amount of times. Like, hey, have you boned like more than a few times? Yeah. Like, have you made each other dinner? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's even a better barometer. Have you done anything Yeah, very intimate like that? Pick them up from the airport. Oh, if you do that. I mean, that's huge. Gone to a funeral for one of their nuclear family members. Mm. It's the sexual energy that we <clears> talked <throat> about. We let it, we let the audience know when they started listening. Yeah. There's a sexual energy to this podcast that's just innate and undeniable. And today it's cranked up to an 11. Yeah. And, and also this other thing, my parents are divorced. Whoa, dude. Dude, what? Mm -hmm. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, here's the thing, though. Yeah. It surprises me, not because I think you've had an easy life, but because you're so well adjusted. And when I see you come through the door, I can tell you're someone yeah. who has experienced life on life's terms, but has never let it dent their optimism or their compassion for other people. That's what, exactly what I was looking for when I said that. Oh. Thank you. Oh. Sorry if I got sexual there, too. Oh, was, I loved it. That was beautiful. Hey, you too, brother. Thank you. Hey, you too. Hey, did you know something about me? What? I know that Chad's parents are divorced. You knew that? I knew that. And you carried that burden? Yeah. That must have been so heavy for you. You know what? I wanted to tell a lot of people, yeah. I'm surprised by that. Not because I'm surprised that you've been through difficult things, but because you carried it with such selflessness. Thank you. Can I tell you guys something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm the reason Chad's parents got divorced. <gasps> You know what? Did you know that this whole time? I knew that I had had... You blew Chad's dad? <laughs> yeah. That was you? Can I tell you something? No, Chad, you go ahead. Tell him something. Well, we always heard, thought it was the lunch lady. <laughs> that's what your dad used to call me because I gave him those sloppy blows. Dude, that's an M. Night Shyamalan twist right there. That would be crazy. Dude, if I found out one of you guys fucked my dad. <laughs> Whoa. Dude, look. <laughs> fucked your dad. That's my favorite line in American Wedding. Better yet, go blow your dad. My dad. <laughs> Great movies, dude. American Wedding. Yeah. American Pie 2. Yeah. Pretty amazing. Rewash it recently. The whole like scene where the chicks are getting them to make out. That's like a, that's like a twelve minute sequence. That's like that's the whole movie. <laughs> they made it longer in the it's, DVD. Did they, oh, dude, yeah. smart. It's probably like, more more breast shots. Like, Mom, Dad, we need to buy this. It's so funny. You're like pitching the movie. You're like, and then here's the kicker. Yeah, we're gonna have a twelve minute lesbian scene. Yeah, exactly. It's gonna everyone's gonna go nuts for it. I watched that movie in theaters with my mom. Oh, dude, yeah, I saw Varsity Blues with my mom. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, I was watching the movie O. Oh. Do you remember that? Oh. It's Othello, but like in high school with Josh Hartnett and Mackay Pfeiffer. Is Julia Stiles in that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And her and Mackay Pfeiffer have like a really intense sex scene where he's like way too aggressive with her. Whoa. And I was watching it with my mom and dad. Mm -hmm. And my mom at one point goes, I'm getting uncomfortable. I have to change it. And me and my dad both went, hey, get away from the controller. Yeah. <laughs> if you can't handle it, leave. Yeah. <laughs> 14. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Did you hear that... Um, yeah, this is it. Yeah, put some of this in the thing. I think awesome. you know they had to postpone this movie because uh, Columbine happened. Oh, uh, maybe that's why they called it. Oh, and there's teenage shooting in it, oh. so they they bumped it. They, I don't think it ever got a theater release. Uh, ev did you hear that everyone's up in arms because uh, Jenna Ortega has a sex scene with? You know, I think it's John Lithgow. Whoa. Whoa. What? Or maybe it's the Hobbit guy. 
Ian McKellen? Ian McKellen. Like, oh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman. Uh, <laughs> My bad, dude. dude. it's more hilarious if it's John Lithgow yeah, was, or Sir what? Ian McKellen, dude. Sir I'm Ian like, this is genius, that. dude. <laughs> this is genius. <laughs> oh, they're uh, 31 years older. Whoa. I mean, look, they're acting. She agreed to it. I don't, I don't see the issue. Yeah, man, this is a, it's a movie. Aaron... Taylor Johnson, the actor. I know it's different. I don't think it's the same guy to gal, gal to guy. Like there is a difference in the the gender responsibility somewhat in these age gap relationships. But he was eighteen. He started dating. Not not. And you know what? People aren't okay with that either. But and they made a big deal of it. So my points mute. Never mind. See, that's what happens to me sometimes. That's what I was talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. You started talking through it, then you realize. No, yeah, because I I because I, yeah. I, I had a reaction to it that was emotional. And then I was she, she catches tons of shit for being married to him, and and people think he's in a you know, unfair kind of manipulated position. Look, if this movie takes place at a steakhouse in Miami, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> it's mm. like, that's every steakhouse in Miami. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, so he's going to crush there. Dude, also kind of crazy, super tangential. The Daily today, it was about one of these, speaking of the uh, column, I think, the kid in Michigan who shot up his school, his parents are going to get charged with- uh, I saw that. Like uh, negligent manslaughter or something. They got convicted. Right. Whoa. But then I was, some of the, de I only picked it up from my girlfriend, but she's real good with details. She was saying like, they, the mom got warnings. Like they uh. have text messages. <laughs> this is all me second handing it, but I'm just going to let her rip. So guys, don't take it too seriously, but look into it yourself. The mom got like texts from the son where he'd be like, mom, I think I hear demons in the wall. Like, <gasps> is everything okay? And she wouldn't respond for like two days. Oh, really? And she left like the gun safe open and the counselor warned her and she didn't like take it seriously mm -hmm. but i almost think it's it's they're putting they're making it criminal to be a bad parent and i think they're just making an example of them hoping that other people will who are in similar situations like all right i better get on top of this or i could go to jail yeah yeah i mean that's got to be uh I, I wonder as a parent if you like how to how to really sort of come to terms with the fact that you're like my kid might be a school shooter yeah, and to man. like call the authorities and all that kind of stuff. Like, I, I think it definitely should have done something here, but there's two movies about it where that's the sitch. We need to talk about Kevin's one of them where uh -huh. Tilda Swinton's like kid is a, that kind of person and she doesn't want to address it because parents are so, we all know those parents when you're growing up who like, they have kind of a shit heel kid mm -hmm. who's just got it like a, bad thing in him mm -hmm. where he's just sneaky and mean and like kind of likes when other people are hurting and the parents just don't want to yeah. look at it it's, it's tough, tough dude therapy dude therapy yeah. yeah yeah i'm so cynical i'm like can that fix it i don't know i think electricity oh yeah <laughs> Electric shock. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get yeah. to the next caller. Sorry. <laughs> Electric shock. Yeah, 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 no, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck. Just That's put, a heavy ass article. Do you, do you do the the Elliot guy DIYs it at home? He just puts two Theraguns to his kid's temple and yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna massage that evil fascia out of you. Go sell Subarus, dude. You need to focus on dude, selling. Yeah, send them to Subarus. Andy, dude. Send them to Andy. That's the what's the other movie? That's <laughs> rip them up and yeah. make them move. The other one's, uh, I think it's called Rudderless, but it's like a twist in that one. So I was, I was a little reluctant to say that one, but it's cool because I'll just give it away. It, the movie's smart. William H. Macy directed it. At the beginning, you think his kid died in a school shooting. And so he starts recording all of his kids unreleased like music. He starts making songs out of it. And then the band gets big and they realize, no, his kid was actually the shooter. Oh. And he's doing his music. I kind of dug it. I think it's good. And the songs are good. Rudderless? Yeah. It's with Billy Cruda. He's really, oh, I think he's like yeah. one of the best actors. He rips I like the shit. liquid up, yeah. He's a great actor. It's hot. So you get really a musician. He's been in quite a few musical movies. Do Almost you know who famous. was supposed to be his part in uh, Almost Famous? Who? Brad Pitt. Whoa. Whoa. Almost good to not cast him. Cause like when they make the t-shirt, you're like, yeah, bro, he should be the fucking thing of the band. Like, come on, bro. Yeah. Brad Pitt would almost be too obvious yeah, as exactly. a star. Like, Duh. And with Crudup, it's, a, it's he's close enough. Mm-hmm. Russell. I love drugs. Do you guys go almost famous or Jerry Maguire? Jerry. Damn, baby. I, I go Jerry Maguire, I think. But I love both movies. I, I haven't watched Almost Famous in a while. Yeah. It's good. They're both amazing, yeah. dude. Before the next call, I just like 
I know your parents are divorced and everything, but uh, mm, yeah. I've, I broke my jaw twice. So mm. I think I've been in more pain, but- Are you trying to say you can't blow them? Well, my parents are also divorced. So do I get blown or? Whoa. Wow. Jake, I had no idea you've gone through that. Um, wow. I've broken my wrist before though. <laughs> wow. My parents aren't divorced, but they are separated. They just don't want to go through the hassle of splitting up their stuff. And I have herpes, hmm. but I'd still like to get blown. I can do that for you. Yeah, I can do that. I get cold sores, so I could give you like double herpes. It sounds safe. <laughs> Guys, I'm interrupting this podcast once again to let you know about our new sponsor, Joy Mode. Guys, this product is epic, okay? it's I'm pretty sure it's the first of its kind. I mean, you've heard of uh, sexual enhancers at the gas station. You've heard of Viagra and Cialis. The thing about those is they have gnarly chemicals, and then you can get dependent on them. And there's just a lot of side effects and all that kind of stuff. Joy Mode nixes all of that because they have Al Natural ingredients. It's like a pre-workout for your hog. So if you want to increase blood flow to your thang so you can get friggin' rock solid erections, Joy Mode is awesome. Dude, I used to take Cialis and Viagra. I would feel like crud the next day. It really wiped me out. Um, this stuff, I can tell from the ingredient profile, I'm going to feel uh, top of the line. So I'm going to, I'm going to give it a dabble. Dude, yeah. I mean, arginine nitrate, people take that for, for working out. It gives you a bigger pump. So it's like taking that bicep pump, mm -hmm. but putting it in your dick. Yeah, so that's the, the so the founder was taking um, <clears throat> caffeine-free uh, pre-workout. And he was like, wow, I'm, I'm having like massive boners. Yeah. And so they use that formula using the arginine nitrate and all that kind of stuff to do that. So basically, you can take this every day. And it, it's not, you know, you won't be, you, you'll, you will have like a really solid, strong, hard Yeah, wiener. write us in. If you don't have a boner, we guarantee you a boner. We'll yeah. get you hard. Yeah. And this is all natural, science backed. And it's like, I mean, is there anything better than having a boner? No, it's like the best. Dude, when you have a big, strong boner and you like look down on it, especially if someone else is like, you're like, hey, yeah. you see that? I mean, dude. <laughs> I, I've been flying recently and I've been having boners while flying. I was talking about that today. Yeah. Yeah. It's People awesome. Chubbed up. Yeah. There's, there's something about the circulation. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I want, I want to have that feeling all the time. If I'm sitting with my girlfriend, just popping boners. That's great. She loves yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Guys, Free, there's, yeah. there's no downside uh, to taking this product. There's no downside to boners. There's no, I mean, you want boners? Use joy mode. Call the product boners. Yeah. God, I love this thing. Boner mode. Guys, go to usejoymode.com. Get 20% off with code go deep at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code go deep at use J O Y M O D E dot com. Also, we are in Florida tonight, Orlando, Tampa, Dania Beach. This week, if you're in the Florida area, come see us. We got Strider with us. Get your tickets at chatjc.com. Let's get back to the show. Hello. Hello. This is Chad and JT, and you got Strider on the line. Who are we speaking with, or do you want to stay anon? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Now I got it. Now I got it. All right, what's good? <laughs> <laughs> what up? You got Chad, hey, JT, and you got Chad, JT, and Strider. Oh man, I got Strider. Oh, that's a real gift. What yeah. up, dude? Strider, you're the man. Dude, back at you, bro. What's going down, Obviously dude? The other two guys as well, but they already know they're the man. Goes without say with these two. Uh, Strider, Strider, capital M, man. Big time, man. Thank you, dude. <laughs> so, what ails you, my friend? Oh, uh, it's a it's a weird one. Uh, I've been trying to figure out how to deal with my mom's volatile love life. Hmm. I said, can you tell us more about her love life? Well, um, she dated, I mean, uh, not dated, but she was married to my dad, which is how I was created. But about like uh, five years ago, she started leaning into the ladies, which uh, I, full I have full support of. But the ladies she picks are just the worst in the world, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Can you give us like the greatest hits the, on what's bad about him? All right. I'll 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 go through the three ladies real quick. All right. So the first lady, uh, 
almost made us. Also, my name's Adam. In case anyone was wondering. What up? Thank you. Uh, but <laughs> the first lady almost made us sell our house. Like she, we, I got close to selling my childhood home because this lady was just like, we got a. It, it felt like uh, what you do when, like, you just want to ruin everything and take everything away, like an exodus. That's what it felt like. She got a uh, dumpster brought into my driveway and just started throwing away all my shit. It mm. was terrible. It was horrendous. That's brutal. How and old were you? I was about uh, 20. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to hear you guys too. It sounds kind of weird on my end as well. No, you're doing great, man. Uh, just, getting... just keep chugging along. Let's get into the other guys. <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, she threw away a bunch of shit, and she also uh, inadvertently made my uh, somebody used to be friends with my mom, and she lived at our house, and she was kind of like my babysitter. She advised my mom not to talk to her, and this lady was in a weird mental space. And for her not to be talked to by my mom, which was her friend, kind of, I personally think, led to her suicide. Whoa. Which was a huge bummer. Yeah, that is a bummer. But, but they, this lady tried to throw all of her belongings into a dumpster <laughs> and just like get rid of them all so i literally dug through the dumpster and grabbed all of her shit and threw them into my car which i didn't have very good relations with this lady either but throwing away her belongings rather than giving them to her family is not something i could be with so i i, I did that at least and so how long has your mom been uh, been going into these relationships like how, how long has this been occurring it i think it's been about five to six years like she 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 was with my dad who's like a legit bro like one of the best dudes i've ever met in my life uh and this first lady she sucked so bad and does your does your mom have a current partner um that's the problem that we don't have enough of a strong relationship anymore that she knows I don't want her to be with this person and she still is, but she doesn't feel comfortable talking to me about it. So it's kind of messing up the whole mother son relationship. Hmm. Cause, cause you do, you, is it do you feel hurt that your mom kind of picked this lady over you when she knows that you don't approve of this lady and kind of think her morality is, is lacking? That's a part of it, but it's that's a part of it, but it's also that like like two out of three of these ladies have actually hurt my mom. Like they've physically touched her. Mm. Like physically like hurt her. And that's the problem with her being like I have all the all the improvement in the world for gay people, but like a woman and a woman, I don't know what I'd do there. I really don't. What do you mean? Like he could probably fight a dude. Like if it was a dude roughing up his mom, he'd go and like beat up the dude's ass. But since Strider, it's a lady, exactly. Strider, it's like, exactly. Well, Strider is on that. Which is probably good because you probably don't want to fight a dude's ass anyway or whatever. But, no, I do. But, I do. No, no, yeah, I know you want to, but I don't know if it's the best. But no, I would. I promise. Well, I, I believe you, dude. Have you? Uh, have what's What's the clearest conversation you and your mom have had on this? It's pretty much me saying, "Mom." You know how this has gone bad in the past. So why would you want to do this again? I and like I I am the reason here. Like it's it's three ladies in a row. I swear. It's three ladies in a row. And it's different in weird ways, but it's not different in other ways. But all three women she's talked to have literally been terrible. All three. Um She's got a pattern, dude. You got to help yeah. your mom recognize her pattern. I don't know how to do that and be like, hey. No, I, I don't even know if it's it. a pattern. I just kind of, I, guys, how do I make her straight again? I feel like a man <laughs> wouldn't do this. <laughs> they, they might. I'd look, I think I think the common denominator is, is, is your mom. She has 
a preference for volatile relationships. And and look, I, I know people who have been in that. No, 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 no. My dad is the nicest guy in the world. That was the guy before all these uh, all these ladies. And I'm I'm happy for a lesbian relationship, but I mean, well, but who initiated the breakup is, with the dad? Uh, I think my mom did, but what my what my dad did was he gave her the house that I now live in, and uh, he was like the nicest dude in the world. But your mom like, didn't he, want that. No, my mom wanted to break up with my dad, which sucked, mm -hmm. but. And I, I don't he say gave that, her the house. No, I think your dad sounds like a great guy, and and, I, and I'm sure your mom's a good person too, and she's mixed up. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, and and I don't know, like you can do therapy with your mom, and you can talk to her. But in most yeah, instances, I mean, there's, there's no, there's no way I'm ever gonna do therapy with my mom. She's like a wicked spiritual person. Like she she uh, she's a she's a healer. She works in a yurt. And, uh, Whoa. like it, it's, it's, it's all a bit too much for me, but like, I, I, I support my mom forever, but, uh, uh, doing therapy with my mom sounds crazy. If you could tell your mom what to change, what would you tell her to change? Just finding better partners? No, no. I would ask her to actually listen to me because it's been three in a row and I've given the same advice and it just keeps on coming back to the same thing. Well, I, th I think as a, as a son, right? It, it, I think when you're telling someone, when, when you're, when someone, I guess when you're talking to your mom and you're saying these partners are bad for you, th these are bad patterns, blah, blah, blah. She might not hear it as much, but if you were to say these relationships that you're getting into, the, these partners that you're choosing, they're hurting me and they're hurting the family. I think that might affect her a little bit more seeing that it's it's not just hurting her it's also hurting her son and i think maybe yeah, that honestly, might speak to her a little bit more chad i would hope that that would happen but about three years ago we kind of got disconnected by our entire family and i spent my fucking thanksgiving at my mom's girlfriend's house and it was the worst thanksgiving i've ever had well so i dude uh you're angry and that's justified and and i'm i'm angry at my parents a lot of people are i think you can't expect your mom to change you have to detach with love and you ha you can still be close to your mom but you have to learn to be your own parent and move on in your own life and be the change you wish she would have made all right. Well, let me add in a let me add in a couple details. Well, I still live at my mom's house, like in a, uh, a fucking year? house in the back. Mm. And uh, my mom has done this for like three years, in, like five years in a row. So, and and they they've like actually hit my mom. Like multiple girlfriends <laughs> have hit my mom. So I don't know what to do because I can't you, hit a lady. You got to move out. Make me move out and leave my mom with these fucking abusive women? Absolutely not. Well, then the alternative is is that you stay protecting your mom forever. Your mom. Your that doesn't sound that doesn't sound that awful to me. You know, I would. Love that's to okay then. My mom that, I think that's very honorable. But then, you, but you Thank have to, you. but you have to go in knowing that your mom might not change. I know she's this literally she's literally the sweetest woman in the entire world. She works doing uh healing and fucking massages in a yurt in my backyard. She's the best lady in the world and I, she's just too nice and people take advantage of her so I can't leave her alone. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? What do you do for work? I'm like a vendor for uh food and beverages and grocery stores so this weekend's gonna suck super bowl i mean yes. i think uh i think it's honorable that you want to protect your mom so much and that you're being a good son but you're also putting yourself in a precarious situation like jt said where you're 
having to protect her all the, you, you, for the rest of your life. And I think one well, thing no, is you have to I'm, you have to recognize I'm, she's an adult who is capable who is responsible for herself. And yeah, but it, Chad, 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 she's been hit. If it was a bro, I would absolutely deck that motherfucker. But since it's a lady, I don't know what to do. Well, right, but it's not up to you to do something. It's up to your mom. Your mom has to break up with these people. Your mom has to have boundaries and enforce those boundaries. It's not the responsibility of her son. Yeah, but have you ever met a person that's too nice? No, I haven't. Really? No, I've met people who like being mistreated somehow because they feel comfortable in it because it's what they're used to and because their self esteem. My low. mom, my mom is like a Sorry, peaceful healer looking for the best in everybody type of lady. But she's just like my mom used to run out into her yurt and sleep there because the other person in the house made her so fearful she didn't feel comfortable in her own home. Have That's you just fucked up? Have you ever called the cops when she's being abused? I mean, that just makes shit, like, that's my mom's place of business, so it just makes shit weird, you but, know? But see, I think you're creating a psychology, I'll just be totally brass tacks and it might be... Yeah, I got you, I got you. But, like, you're creating a situation where there is no solution, and where it can't get better, and where you guys are just stuck. And the truth is, there is a way out, but it just sucks. And it's up to you to decide what's tolerable. If this is what you want and you feel happy in it, then you have to stay with it. And you'll just have more conversations like this. And that's okay. But it's, it, 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 you'll never be able to understand why people make the mistakes they do. It's, there's no, it's just what feels, it's just what they're used to and they're doing the best they can. Yeah, I mean, I can deal with that, but it just, I, it hurts really bad when she just won't listen to me. When I've seen this know, happen man. for the past two girlfriends you know I've, the I've, third I've, one is just as bad I've, I've been there man i know it hurts a lot and it's traumatic for you it's that's that's the problem is it's traumatic for you and it's hurting you and that that's why i get upset because it because i know it's costing you part of your life and we can say it's not but it is it's hard for you to go through that it's brutal and you don't deserve oh, that. i 100 i 100 agree that it is costing me a bit of my life it's also caused me to get more into the booze like I just, I, this shit used to make me so mad. I just would we, yeah, so we can't, freak out at the end of every night. We, we can't do that. We can't have you hurting yourself because someone else won't look out for themselves. You got to look out for yourself, man. It doesn't make you. I bad, know, but so. the, the someone, the someone else is my mom. I know. I know. I know how you think about your mom, JT. It's very important. But I, but I've done this stuff with my mom. I have. I'm not speaking from a. I'm not throwing stones in a glass house. I've I've had these hard conversations with people in my family before, and I've and I've detached before too. It doesn't mean you you. I know, but with your exact mom. Yes. Yeah. All right. Belief. 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 <laughs> I'm telling you, brother. I've been. Uh, it's all. It's all overlap. I, I've been there. I'm just saying with. Two of my mom's ex girlfriends that have fucking hit her. It's like, what do I do? If it was a bro, I would have fucking stabbed him by now. But with a lady, I can't do it. I just call her a cunt or something, and bummer. What uh, is she in an abusive relationship right now? I wouldn't call it abusive, but I find it abusive to my own mental because my mom tells me she won't she doesn't talk to this lady anymore and then i see on her phone that she's talking to her i walk in in the morning and then she just walks away from me because she's on the phone i'm like oh damn that sucks wait so your mom is saying she's not in a relationship with someone but she's hiding it from, but she actually is and she's hiding it from you yeah, yeah. The lady that she's with lives in uh, New York. Uh, uh, maybe cut that. I don't know. But uh, she lives in uh, a place, and she always goes to this place and says she's going on a business trip. And then it's just like I have. There's no trust. There's literally zero trust at all. But see, because you're you're in like a codependent relationship with your mom. Do you are Do you have a girlfriend? Never have. It's because you're married to your mom. Oh, JT, I take that as an insult. I don't like that. No, but I've I've been through it myself, man. It's like you become the husband that you wish she had. 
No, I mean, you know, it's a weird, you know, it's a weird scenario that uh, they probably not many things uh, happen. Like my mom and my dad, who are divorced, live on the same street, and they're both like good friends, and they're both in a good relationship, and they're taking me out to dinner like this uh, Sunday. Yeah, they love you. you. There's good to it too. Yeah, I know, but like. I just wish my mom kind of was straight because it feels like gay relationships suck. <laughs> I don't think it's the I don't think it's the, that alignment that's the issue. But if, brother, we no, got they get violent. They get violent when they're not cooperative. They they do. Gay uh, men and women when it's a gay relationship, they get weirdly violent. I, I think. It, sorry, go ahead, Chad. Oh no, I just had a thought. That if, if if your mom's starting to hide things from you, then I think that's a clear sign that you need to detach. Because maybe things are know, getting a little bit suffocated. Chad, I live in the back and I don't have enough money to leave. <laughs> well, you're not paying rent, right? Uh, I I just redid my entire bathroom for my own money and it's my mom's place. So I, I would consider that rent. But see, why did you do that? Save the money and go yeah. get an apartment. <laughs> and get a girlfriend and get busy living or get busy dying. Oh, come on now. I, I, this is, I'm redoing it so I can get a girlfriend to live in a house behind my mom's place. No, no, that's no, no, that ain't going to happen. Brother. No, we're not can, doing that. Can I that. get a strider opinion here? Guys, you guys are killing me. Can I get a strider opinion? Yeah, dude, you got to, uh, let me tell you what, a, a, it is not an attractive, uh, lure for a, a lady to be like, yeah, I live back behind the house of my mom's like nah you gotta be ladies want an independent guy who's gonna be able to you know who do you want your mom to be with a, uh, a strong hey, but you bro are killing the answer you know the sometimes the truth it, it hurts but it will set you free brother it's gonna hurt first so i think i think what you can control is what is your life you gotta move out you know obviously you stay in contact with your mom as best you can but get an apartment you got the job you save the dough and then you meet the girl and, you know, once you have your own meaningful, not the relationship with your mom isn't meaningful, but your own interpersonal independent relationships, so you're going to have find yourself growing and able to make more balanced, gathered decisions when it comes to your mom and, and family. So it's, it's tough, man. And how old are you? Mid twenties? Maybe he hung up. Adam? Hang in there, bro. Yeah, we love you, man. Uh, if you're listening to this pod, we love you. We do. Um, I, he, oh, he, he dropped his phone and clicked the mute button. Oh, okay. Okay, good. He's a sweetheart of a guy. But see, like, even what he's writing here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Like, see, he's 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 resigned himself to it's fucked. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's not that I haven't felt that way, but, like, you hate to see that in someone. Like, you're like, dude, you, it's not going to be perfect, but you can make it closer to what you want and what you deserve. For sure. For He's sure. addicted to that. Exactly. You get used to it. Yeah. The devil you know. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it makes life... What is that? It makes life not boring? Gives you some... I, I don't know. It's some kind of excitement that he's addicted to. And you get a pride. You're like, I'm helping. I mean, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm there for someone. But there's an anger in him, too. You could hear the anger. He's yeah. pissed. Yeah. I mean, to say... Yeah. It's frustrating. Um, yeah, uh, I haven't looked into it, but Drake did Drake show his oh, his dude, hog? great shout! His yeah, penis. I don't know, I don't know what happened. What what happened? Yeah, Jake, can you give us a legit look at Drake's penis? I saw one where he had like a big bendy banana cock, and uh, it's people are saying I don't know if that's the right one though. So I haven't been able to really know that I'm seeing it, but everyone's saying it's gigantic, which is awesome. More just life, a, more cock. He sent a dick pic to the world, dude. So who, who leaked it? Like he sent it to a girl or something like that and then she put it on the internet or... So there's a video out there. Is it a video like he sent to a girl? That's what I don't know. I don't know. I was asking that. I'm I've only sure. seen a photo and he's just holding it like this on bed and it's a big... Uh, it's like bendy, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Wow. Is it scrubbed off the net already? This is unbelievable that they were able to scrub this off the web. Like, who's in charge of this? They're doing an unbelievable job of wiping Drake's fat one. Yeah, dude. Dude, hilarious. 
Drake unbothered by alleged leaked video. That's page six, New York Pussy. Dude, so great. He's like, yep. Why would he be bothered? Yep, I've got a fat, fat penis. You know what the thing is too? Have you guys taken photos of yourself with your hard up, hard one in your hand? Mm -mm. Some pics. Daily. Some pics. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Got to check in. But what do you say? Some pics what? I've taken good ones and bad ones. Like there's ones where if they got leaked, I'd be like, oh, that's all right. But then there's other ones where I'm like, please, no one ever see this. Dude, some, it's lighting. You know what I mean? It's all. Yeah. It's perspective. Dude. This is LA, baby. You know? Do you do it like that? Like you hold it? Mm -hmm, some of them. I was at the Shutter's bathroom. Hotel nice. bathroom, and I took a really nice one of myself. Shutters has good lighting. Yeah. I put mine next to a roll of dimes just so my wife can remember what, just frame of reference. That's fire. I, uh, I put mine next to a Bic lighter. There it is. Whoa! Whoa. Oh, dude. yeah, it is, dude. He's got like a banana cock. Wait, what, what was the top of that article? It was someone estimating the sizes. I'm curious just about that person's personality. That was pretty huge. It's huge. Okay, so how does that change your perception of Drake? Uh, it doesn't. You don't like understand him more or think he's cooler? Uh, you know, the thing is, I don't, I, I can't give a good an answer because I don't follow Drake. I don't listen to his music. I don't know anything about him really. So I can't say I even think about it. I know he's huge, both popularity wise, career wise and hog wise, but I just don't really pay attention. It's actually very average. This is the top Reddit. It's so funny. It's actually very average looking. People are fooled by the start of the video. His hand is on the balls, not the shaft. The shaft you see is his full size and it's probably not even six inches long. <laughs> <laughs> Look near the end of the video when he holds the shaft. His dick is most likely shorter than six inches, given when his hand is on it near the end uh, here, barely any space at the bottom top. Oh my gosh. I don't know. That, I think that's bigger than six inches. It's huge. Yeah. It's like six inches around. It, I, it looks eight inches long. It's long. I, I mean, I see that and I'm like, can some people really have it all? I don't know. Yeah, but he's probably a bad hang one-on-one. -on -one. Isn't he like kind of not chill? I don't know. I think he's funny too. Like when he hosted the ESPYs and stuff or when he does SNL, I think he's he's a pretty intelligent guy. And I like his song. I don't know about the new stuff, but just hold on, we're going home. Yeah. Great song. Oh, dude, yeah. yeah. And then, and then, um, yeah. uh, I didn't watch the Bobby Altoff pod, but the fact that he's willing to go on a podcast like that shows he has a sense of humor. I think. Yeah. So does he like to hook up with Bobby Altoff, dude? It is convenient timing of when it was, uh, when she, when her husband said they got divorced was like two weeks after she was with Drake. Yeah. I mean, that's tough man it's like uh you know if you're a media personality you it does help a lot if people are attracted to you if the people you're talking to if you have some kind of you know tension and uh as someone's partner i i think it is harder for dudes because like if you're a, if you're a wife of one of the guys it's kind of like it boosts your status but if it's your wife it, it doesn't do the same people start to feel bad for you so mm -hmm. i'm sure there's a lot for him and i don't think he knew she was going to try and be a celebrity, right? Like when they got together. So Probably that not. that's a ton to kind of, I've, I've seen that too, like on the other, both sides of a relationship where they meet before the person even decides to try and become a famous person. And then when they become a famous person, it's like, you know, you have totally different yeah. just day-to-day -day desires. Yeah. Does she, uh, did she do like stand up or anything before her podcast? I don't, Jake, you know more about her than, it, than us. Uh, she was actually, she's actually a TikTok star for like two years before she got mainstream famous. Mm. And she was basically just making videos about like breastfeeding her kids and like oh, that's right. being a parent when she was like young. So her husband was actually in quite a bit of the content. Oh, and also, I had that all wrong. I'm he's sorry. like, a, no, I mean, it could technically be true, I guess. But um, he also is like a huge CEO of a tech giant. Like he's like, a, oh, really? he's into tech. So some people were at the beginning were saying like her success was based off him, like with analytics and things like that. Mm. But I, I don't know that for sure. I don't, that's like people say Amy Schumer made it big cause she's like somehow related to Chuck Schumer. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, she's hilarious. dude. <laughs> she was so funny yeah. out the gates. And like, I do not think Chuck Schumer's calling like skyline comedy mm -hmm. in appleton and he's like you better book amy yeah, yeah exactly i know they're like oh well he puts pressure on the agents and stuff like i'm like no you, you 
Bobby, call, Bobby's good. Like when I first saw one of her clips, I was like, this person has it. Yeah. He calls uh, Judd Apatow. He's like, look, you got to put my niece in the movie. He's like, yeah. oh, done. He called Pepsi. She needs to do the ads. Yeah. Dude. Also, <laughs> tough content shift for the husband being like, hey, babe, uh, my new podcast is going to take place in a bed with celebrities. You can't be there when we record. Yeah. Uh, it's like, oh, okay. Also, uh, <laughs> our friend Ari is like a majority of the reason she's famous, honestly, because he was letting her record at Melrose and it would be like no famous people, no like guests. She would just be in there riffing and that's how she got started. So oh. shout out Ari. Nice. 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 He's funny, dude. Do All you right, move man, to Texas? Guys, check him out. No, nah, he's just always on the move. Yeah. Dude, uh, it's funny. I went back to the, these are comments on the Drake Hawk photo. It's actually very jabbing. Look, <laughs> he's grabbing hand is on his balls, not the shadow. That's so dude. They, when they say like the proofs in the pudding, like whenever someone calls it very average looking, there's about two other paragraphs describing why they think that. Yeah. And when one person's like, "It's huge," it just goes, "It's huge." <laughs> like, duh, dude. It'd be funny. It's fucking big. <laughs> did you see that coming? <laughs> what do you say? Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Can you imagine the guy? See, I want to see a video of the guy typing that. So funny. And then just being like, enter. That's amazing, dude. Uh, should we take a call? Yeah, let's do it. Chad, is there anything you want to tell us? Yeah. No? Sure, nothing's going on or any. Oh. Thank you. Before we hop into this call, uh, my parents are divorced. Oh, man. Sorry, man. Jake, can you ring it? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Hello? <laughs> What's up? This is Chad, JT, and you've got Strider. Dude. Dude. Wait, no way. Wait, really? Way, dude. What up? Dude. My heart is bursting out of my chest like my first date with my wife, dude. This is crazy. Let's oh, go. Dude. What Dude, up? you guys are such legends, bro. I've been listening to y'all since like day one, back however many years ago that was. Oh, dude. oh, thank you, man. Dude, I love you guys. Dude, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Are you located in Florida? Oh yeah, I am. Oh, I love Florida, man. I I'm dressed Dude. in Florida garb right now. It's like my favorite state. Dude, Florida is legit. I was so stoked when you were like hopping on the jaguars bandwagon dude i was like let's go dude yeah go let's jags go. go jags fuck yeah dude Dude, yeah dude next year's our year i've been saying that for like 10 years now but this time it's for real it's true yeah it's true it's for real but yeah no uh so yeah i was texting you guys in because i had a little bit of a quandary at my fire station nice we had a cop now we got a firefighter this is beautiful oh what yeah. dude, no way Let's I'll go. box this guy. We'll go. We'll do a but, charity match. That's what I'm saying, dude. They used to have a show like that, like cops versus firefighters. Sick. Dude, that's sick. I would lose a boxing match, by the way, but I would I would raise money for charity. That makes it even sicker that you were down to throw, though. Yeah, no, I'm down to get vulnerable, dude. I'll just be out there with my mustache and like, hey, dude, I'll talk trash and just not back it up at all. <laughs> I love it. Just wearing it on the stash, dude. Yeah, dude. But no, no. So real quick, just had a, a quick question for you guys. So at our fire station here in uh, Florida, we like to do like group workouts, you know, you know, get buff and be able to pick up hot chicks out of fires and stuff and carry them out in slow motion. So like beautiful, we try to do workouts together. So one day we, um, we got a new TV for the station. So we put it up in our gym and I was like, oh, dude, I have the perfect thing to get all the boys here amped. So I turned it on and I did a compilation of all the Rocky training montages because Ooh. Rocky's like my hero, dude. Mm -hmm. And they were all clowning on me for turning it on. They were like, dude, get this shit off. We don't want to watch this while we're working out. And dude, Whoa. that cut me to my core, dude. Whoa. To my core. I was like, bro, does this not get you amped? I was like watching Sylvester Stallone overhead press a freaking wheelbarrow with three people in it. And he's just like screaming dude i was like i was so jacked on the assault bike here and they were all just like laughing at me like who put this on and i was like i did man so like i don't know how to like proceed like i've kind of just been not working out with them and work out on my off days and then when i come to the station just like take it like a rest day but i don't know how to like you know 
move forward from this. Have they not seen Rocky? Dude. Who are I these think guys, they have. dude? Are they, how old are they? Well, okay, that, that might be a thing. I'm 24, and they're all like late 30s, early 30s. Okay, so they should like it even more. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. The thing is, they love watching Top Gun, like, inside and, like, chilling after, like, dinner, put on a movie, maybe, if we're not running calls. But I was like, dude, how are you loving Top Gun, but not Rocky? What's going on? The new on? Top Gun or the old Top Gun? Both. Okay. Are they Arnold guys? Are they still into that rivalry? I don't know. Did they grow up, like, in the Eastern Bloc where... American art wasn't allowed. Dude, you know what? That might be it. Yeah, do they watch Top Gun because they cheer for the MIG fighters and the next gen fighters? They actually cheer. Do they watch Rocky Four and look at it as a tragedy? That Call Drago. Oh, dude. Or not Call Drago. Fucking what's his name? Dude, the maybe. Dolph Lundgren's character. Ivan. Ivan that he lost. Dude, you know what? That might be it. You know what you should do? Maybe get a Creed compilation going. Mm. Oh, dude! Like uh, the like with the That's Michael good. B. Jordan. There's a good training montage in Creed too. It's not a good movie, but there's a pretty sick little training montage in that you can draw from. Oh, dude! Yeah, when he's like fighting in the desert. Was that the desert one? When yes. he's Like in the tire, like the big dude just wailing on him, and he's like, "Ah, I can't take it." And then by the end of the montage, he's just dominating. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Are they dude. jealous of you? I mean, there's not really much to be jealous of, but <laughs> I don't know. Here's the thing. The problem is very clearly not with you. It's with them. Mm -hmm. Because putting on Rocky for your boys to work out with seems like a very nice thing to do. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I thought it was nice. But, I mean, again, I don't know how they work out. I only see them, like, every third day. So, I mean, I don't know if they have their own workout routine. But I didn't know if I was, like being assertive and like trying to push this on them. But I was like, dude, this is like sick, but I don't know. I guess it just backfired. Could you change stations? Dude, I don't know if I could do that. I, as much as like this whole Rocky dilemma is messing with my head. I do love these boys. Mm. Right. It's fine. Sometimes you got to set them free. If you love something, you set them free. Mm-hmm. That's true. Because there's taste, go the and then there's values. Mm. Word. Mm. Or do you think maybe I should just play it every day until they just love it? I think Guantanamo. The proof is in the pudding. If you work out, and you work out without the Rocky video playing, and say you're putting up, I don't know, 225 on bench, and then with the Rocky video playing, you bump that up to 250. Uh, the results are undeniable. Why are they not going to want it on? Let me ask you a question, bro. What's your BMI? Yeah. What's my BMI? Body mass index. Did you not know what oh. BMI was? No, I did. I just it sounded a little uh, caught, caught you off guard. Oh no, you did for sure. No, my BMI is like I think it's like twenty <clears> percent. <throat> Dude, it's not good. Here's the thing. You're going to work out on your own, watching Rocky montages, and you're going to shred yourself down to 6% body fat. You're going to roll Dude. back up to the station wearing a suit and tie, no pants. Mm-hmm. And well, you're- like free and, my dog? Yeah. Yeah. Tell him, hey, fellas, here's a hose for you. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be like- they're gonna, be, they're gonna be like and they're gonna see your aura your glow and they're gonna be like what changed about you and you're like i watch rocky mm -hmm. dude you know i think i'm gonna just have to do that just every day just play hearts on fire soul yeah. desire dude and just work out hard dude it's beautiful you know you don't need to put it on repeat was it on repeat is that the thing no, I, I fired it up, and they were, like, kind of watching it during, like, Rocky 1 training montage, but as soon as the second one came on, they were like, ah, nah, and they told me to turn it off. Have you played The Notebook? <laughs> I have not, but that's a good idea. Just, like, 
as freaking Ryan Gosling is asking the chick, like, what do you want? And I'm just crushing bicep curls. I mean, maybe does Dude, crying make you work out harder? That's the exact scene I was talking about where his voice kind of goes up on, what do you want? Dude, the vulnerability. Nice Question, did you sneak in old high schooling wrestling highlights into this hockey, Rocky video that you cut yourself? Just have to, you know, need full disclosure. Something I would do. I did not. No. Okay, okay. So then there's no problem. He's a straight shooter. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, this is going to hurt, but I think I know what you have to do. Play it on me, man. You got to become a cop. Yeah. Oh, dude. No. Dude, get out of here, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was going from a first responder to a second responder. Get out of here. Oh, dude, oh, take that, dude. Oh, that was a test, brother. You're a true firefighter. All okay. right, all right. Yeah, that was a test. Dude, to the bone, man. My all grandpa right. was a firefighter in Brooklyn. Oh, that's oh, awesome. Let's go. When dude. everything was made of wood. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, dude, everything burned. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> they put out fires with guns. Shoot that Dang. thing. That's intense. Um, but uh, one one last thing, if I can ask you guys, I don't. I feel bad taking up too much time. But um, for I just got married back in October, so hey, now I have a big ass wife. Fuck yeah, dude! Thank, thank you, boys. I was thinking, uh, what what should I do for our first Valentine's Day being married? Oh, I love that, dude. I mean, that Rocky montage might work in the bedroom too. You know, you pop that on. I don't know how anyone's not going to be in the mood. Um, you know, if, if you, when it comes to sealing the deal, but I always think Valentine's day and you're a firefighter, correct me if I'm wrong. Can you, can probably cook in my experience, all firefighters cook well. Oh yeah. I, I cook, I, I can, I can throw together some stuff. Exactly. You got That'd your go-tos, you know, instead of going, unless she likes to go out, if you guys don't go out for dinner a lot, I would say go out for a nice, a nice dinner, you know, keep it nice and cliche. You're in Florida, get yourself, I don't know what type of crab do they eat down there? Those big old stone crabs or whatever. But, oh yeah, dude, all the crabs. Yeah, bro. You, I, I like to cook for my dank ass wife on Valentine's Day, only because her birthday is the um, day before, so we go out on her birthday, stay in on Valentine's, cook. So I think cook, put on a little music, dance, make a little love, get down tonight. Sounds nice to me. Dude. Maybe that a little. Nice to me. Maybe you throw a theme to it, like you said when you took, picked up this call, your heart skipped like the first date you went on with your wife. Where'd you guys go on your first date? Maybe you relive that a little bit. You know, if it was go-karting or something, take her go-karting. Nah, dude, you know, it was throw... cliche. We went to a movie. What movie? <laughs> Black Hawk Down? Uh, Venom. <laughs> Venom, dude. Nice. I love the way you laughed. Dude, you either get a Venom suit, you surprise her sexually with a Venom suit. Dude, that could be tight. <laughs> <laughs> bro you buy a venom suit you take that off yeah and you recreate the spider-man kiss you go upside down and have her pull down your thing as the yeah. hose drops water on you and dude do you see venom's tongue you could dart with that <laughs> if the suit comes it. with a nice venom tongue dart dude venom munch yeah get box. the venom suit and dress up in that and wear that when you guys uh do the thing that couples do yeah dude cry together That's solid. and then uh you know what to do <laughs> Yeah, no. I, I think I can take it from there. I think that's the move, dude. Get a venom suit. Yeah, get in the Venom suit. Amazon, dude. You can get on anything. Yeah, on you'll Amazon, get it in bro. time. Come Order on. it Order. today, though, like right now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, do it honestly before you hang up. And send us a photo of you in the Venom suit on Valentine's Day. We won't share it with anybody. It'll just be a group text kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you, you oh, got, dude, for sure. Do you guys know why Venom kind of bombed reviews wise? Why? They didn't show him much in box. Yep. Like, that's half the comic. Yeah, how hungry is he? Oh, we're looking on Amazon right now, bro, and there's Venom oh, suits, dog. Dude, yeah, you're looking <laughs> sick. Dude, there's even a sexy girl one, dude. Oh, oh, dude, yeah, you surprised her with that. <laughs> they look like they're mostly in kid sizes. <laughs> Have you told her you love her already? Uh, yeah, dude, we've been married since October. I've told her I loved her a lot. That's sick. Nice. Like oh, dude, have you told her that you loved her in a Venom you... voice? I love you. How does Venom talk? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I feel like that might um, startle her a little bit. You need that. Down to try. Keep it fresh, dude. You're married. You got to keep it fresh, dude. One married man if to another. If you dress as Venom, could she dress as... Madam Web? Or like someone from the Viet Cong? Oh, yeah. Oh. What? <laughs> 
Does he go there in that movie? I haven't seen it. I thought that maybe sequences take place. <laughs> no, I think he's in New York. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't really my point, though. <laughs> I, I don't remember that part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so maybe uh, I could do all that stuff uh, sometime in the morning because uh, in the evening we're actually coming to see you guys in Orlando. Oh, oh dude. dude! Party time, dude! Oh, wait. You nailed it, dude. Oh, we're going to have so much fun. It. We're going to shout you out, dude. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, and we're yeah. going to be safe. Yeah, dude, you better come in dude, your no, Venom dude, outfit. Literally. Oh, no, bro. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I'm serious, dude, bro. Yeah, if you don't serious, have one, dude. I'm bringing a fucking Venom outfit to the show dude, yeah. with us. <laughs> I'll yeah, seriously I'm going to dress as a Viet Cong. <laughs> dude, are you just going to do that, dude? Wait, can all you bros get Venom costumes and then we can all hang out in our Venom costumes together as a group? Dude, For that sure. would fire me. Uh, be sick, dude. We never you know, you yeah, you like groups. You do. like group stuff, dude. You want the fire yeah, station with you. Dude, I love this. Dude. And dude, we'll do a... Ro- oh, and we'll do some like... We'll do like handstand push-ups together, Rocky style. Hell yeah. Oh, dude. I'm down to try. I don't know if I can do one. Dude, you, all, me, try. Chad, and JT will get in a barrel, and you'll have to squat us. Just like I could Rocky montage. Do that. I have thick thighs. Nice. Love dude. that. Beautiful. All right, man. You're the man, dude. We're going to see you in Orlando. We're so fired up. Thanks for the call. <laughs> dude, of course. Thank you guys for talking to me, man. This has been fucking enriching. I oh, love it, yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. You're a legend. Thank you, and be safe out there, bro. All right. You too, boys. I love you guys. Love you, too. Love, love you, bro. Dude, the, the, this, what? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> oh man, see that's a nice call, that yin and yang, good. dude. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we yeah. got squad dynamics. Hey, life our, is everything. He's true. You guys want to do one more quick one? Yeah, sure, yeah, I, sure, sure. I, I gotta leave it like ten. Soon. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll do this one. Quick. What up? You're here with Chad, JC, same, same. and Strider. Oh my gosh. So good to talk to you guys. I've been a fan for like seven, eight years. Oh, <laughs> You're the man, dude. My heart's racing right now. I love you guys. Love you too. <laughs> um, shout out to my my boy D Thor. He's one of my fellow listeners, so I, I told him I give him a shout out. So D Thor, oh, what up? What up, D Thor? Let's go, dude. Great name. Yeah, dude. Sounds like like your boy's like a cleaning agent or something like that, dude. <laughs> you got something you can't get rid of? D Thor's in the house. Yeah. Nah. It also sounds like a uh, black dude you'd hire to slam your wife. <laughs> oh, dude. That's the theme of this episode. For sure. <laughs> totally. So, what so anyway. do you do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So, um, Thor's brother, D Thor, dude. Is, comes from Valhalla dude, I'm gonna... and make your wife come. <laughs> yeah, dude. D Thor's hammer. <laughs> D Thor's hammer cock. <laughs> He just rolls in from Asgard. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Where's yeah. she at? Yeah. <laughs> just, just, ten minutes later. All right. I'll see you later. See you. That was nice. Toss me a coke. All right. Man. Well. Anyways. <laughs> Sorry, dude. What, what ails you? Go, baby, go. So, um, I'll give you the short version, and then I'll give you some backstory after that. But I'm gonna remain a non because, you know, just out of respect for my now ex, you know. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, so yeah, I recently broke up with my girlfriend on like Tuesday, and oh, uh, sorry, brother. The, the following, the following, thank you. The following week, um, her car broke down. So like for two weeks, she hasn't really had a car, and she's kind of like been like just kind of you know staying at my place, trying to find a ride to get to work. And then she she lives out of state. Uh, I live in like somewhere in California. I'll say that. Like uh, in between San Francisco and Los Angeles, and her her brother decided to give her his old car, her his old car. So he drove it all the way down, and and he was going to meet us in San Francisco, which is like four hours away from me. And uh, so I was like, oh, this is going to be. I'll drive you up. It will be a good weekend out of it. Um, and I'll ask my mom because my mom, my mom's boyfriend is like crazy rich. And he has like this $5 million place across the street from the Giants place, Giants mm-hmm. Stadium. And uh, and it was all going to work out. And it was all going to be fine. We're like, oh, sweet, we can stay here. We'll make a fun weekend out of it. But I, I'm also a coach. And the game wouldn't end till like 8.30. So it would be a late night drive. 
And so I like tell them, I'm like, Hey, and I send a message to her brother and she's a twin. And so she's like, Oh, can my twin come too? And I'm like, of course, that'd be awesome. I'll hang out with you and your, your two siblings. And, and so then I send him a message, let him know like how to get in and everything. And then no response. And then later the, the next, the day before we were going to leave, she sends me a text while I'm at work and goes, Hey, me and my sister got bus tickets and we're going to go up earlier and you can meet us there after your game. And I went, no, like, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not going to drive up alone, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so that was like, I, I drew a, a line, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not going to go if you, why would you take the bus? Like, you know, <laughs> that makes, that seems kind of outrageous to me. Mm-hmm. And so I tried to be calm and cool. Really, we were really good with communication and stuff. But you know, I'm human, so emotions kind of come out, and uh, I probably didn't say it as best as I could. And you know, and so I didn't go. And then my mom wasn't cool with them staying there without me there. Yeah. And so they had to get a hotel, and it just kind of blew up. Brother, and all I'm this gonna, is I'm happening, and st- I haven't even seen her. We haven't even like seen each other. It's just all through texting and calling and she couldn't like make time to like figure it out with me, you know, before we go. Anyways, then she comes back from her trip and I guess it was just uh, you know, it was it was kind of the icing on the cake, you know. There was like a bigger underlying issue and that was kind of the reason why we ended things and uh so yeah, I just wanna know like if I was in the right, you know, for brother, I'm going to slide in here. 100%. Not There's nothing here. What? You're good. You handled it perfect, man. All good. Yeah, dude. No, nothing bad. Uh, it's not even a big thing. Just got to do shit like this. You're good. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, you were going to help her go get a car. Then she should have just taken the bus in the first place. Since you guys were already broken up with, it was already nice. of you. Oh no, like, no, we were, we were together. We were together. Uh, uh, during this, you were together. Uh, oh, Oh, this yeah, is what we led together. to you yeah. breaking up. Yeah, I was like, like, no, you shouldn't even. I was kind you shouldn't of, even be calling in about this. What? No, I was like, uh, I was just kind of butthurt that she no. would like take the bus up without me. You know? No, nah, man. Who cares? You got to move on. No, take the bus, dude. She's got to take the bus. <laughs> you just, just got to move on. Clean man. and I dry. Even, I don't even know what we're talking about. What the fuck are we even talking about? Man? <laughs> I love you to death, but like, come on. Yeah, no, yeah, she's a little selfish. She did the right thing. Fuck it, move on. She talked to her friend. Oh, it's awkward. We're in the car. We're broken up. Blah blah blah. They probably wanted to do whatever. Dude, no. Bro. She's gonna no, go stay at your mom's house without her. Right. We were together. We were we broke up after the trip. Yeah, this is part of why you guys broke up. She does annoying things. You got to be done with it. You got to move on. Uh, don't even don't sure. don't ever don't ever call back about something like this again. We've got to way beefier, way beefier, man. We got listeners, man. Come on. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess I'm just overplaying it in my head, but no, you for sure because um, you're, you're a good guy. You're a good dude. No, you are very nice. Dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. You know, I thought you were doing this you. all when yeah. you were already broke up. I was like, what are you doing all this? I was stuff? I was waiting for a no. huge twist. I was like, there better be a twist. And then you were like, so what's up? Yeah. Here, here's what you do, man. You call in D Thor. Yeah. And let dude. him take care of business. Yeah. Let D Thor bite the bullet on this one next Seriously. time. And then, you, and, yeah. then, and then you move on. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm doing all the right things, you know, but you know, it's uh. It's hard when you put your whole self into in a, something, you know, and then yeah, uh, that's 100 percent. But you'll do it again. Yeah. You're a fully committed brother and you get in there. And I like the tone by the tone of your voice. You seem like a lighthearted, optimistic dude that attacks life. And I would maintain that because you seem like a really solid Thanks. dude that I want to hang out with. You hungry for more life? Oh, appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, dude. You know, I'm I, I'm still hitting the gym hard every day. You know, <laughs> trying to trying to keep busy, but you know, the baseline now is it's no longer. It's kind of like a sadness. You know, just trying to get over it. Oh, dude, you'll power through. You'll find someone way better. I I, I promise. And uh, For sure. just, just keep living, going to Giants games. You know, I used to go to Giants games. I'd get a cafe mocha. Whoa, nice. Yeah. My dad's like, do you want a hot chocolate? I'm like, I'll one up you. I'm gonna do a cafe mocha. Get a cafe mocha, a hot dog, and you know, meet someone. Oh, get in a kayak out in the water behind the park. Sure. Meet. I'm sure you'll meet your next girlfriend out there. Catch a homer, <laughs> and then be like, oh, what's up, Lisa? Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, and it, it's also like I guess like we kind of created like a friend group, you know. Uh huh. And uh, now it's like both of our friends. Were, are like 
we share the same friends. So it's kind of like, you know what I found with that? No one really gives that much of a shit unless someone like cheat on someone or did something, whatever. Like if you break up, they're your friends. Like, yeah. like if they're your friends and if they're your real friends, like they're going to be, they, their, their brains aren't binary. They're going to understand there's complexities. It's fine. Unless like one of you went out and slept around and lied to like everyone, which doesn't sound like that happened. No, nah, not at all. Yeah, it was cool. You know, it was clean break. We were very cordial. So yeah, nice. Yeah. 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 For Christmas, send her a Greyhound gift certificate. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a good one. <laughs> Dude, Declan, thanks for calling in. Thank you. And I also just want to say, like, I love that you guys are so funny, but it's also super deep. Like, in your TV show, like, when you you and Chad and JT were having, like, a therapy session, and it was just so funny, but it was also so deep at the same time, you know? Just the, oh, the way man. you guys were talking to each other and, like, your whole, like, gun control video that you have, it's just, like, so funny like i just feel so great holding this assault rifle gun you know but you like (laughs) see the the craziness behind it too so i just think what you guys are doing is so awesome so thanks oh thanks man i appreciate that dude and strider i love you too dude i love you bro you're so funny and uh thank you guys for always you know messaging me back on instagram and stuff whenever i text you guys thank you dude. love you man and do whatever team you're coaching if you need a player i'm down like i'm just looking to get competitive you know and i want to be part of something so i don't know what age group or whatever it is but i can forge documents if you need need be you hang in there as you get through this not so difficult time (laughs) thank you dude Uh, all right well appreciate you guys appreciate you man you're a great guy i wonder if he made his his ex take coach on the bus dude (laughs) since he's a coach dude see that have you guys seen have you heard armison when he says well i had a divorce it was immediately amicable really that was a thing never mind uh hey man are you in Viet Cong? i'm going full Viet. i'm wearing a straw <laughs> hat to this show i'm gonna be hiding you're not gonna know <laughs> you're saying you dressed as a Viet Cong. <laughs> what <laughs> i'm going full all right that was it that, that was, was everything. fun guys yeah it was that was fun nice. that was fun app Strider, thanks for hopping in. Dude, you're the dude, best, thank man. you. Oh, back at you, bros. Love you guys. This was so much Love fun, you dude. Too, man. Hey, shit. Orlando, Tampa, Dania, however you say that. Dania. Dania, we're there. This Feb- week, so yeah. we're in Orlando tonight, Tampa tomorrow, Dania Friday. That's right. Tickets to chatandjt.com. If you need advice, these guys are